Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Ferdy, and um, this is going to be my first formal open forum uh, where we're going to continue the conversation and discussion on turning everyday items into improvised weapons for self-defense. And of course, I leave all my videos up for anybody who wasn't able to watch the live broadcast. And um, I'm going to have some of my friends uh, come on and give their take on how we can use an everyday item for advice for self-defense. And uh, this is open not only to martial artists, but also to non-martial artists. And one um, thing that we, I want to address also and is uh, anything that can be found in a woman's purse that she could use for self-defense as an improvised weapon for self-defense. Now, um, earlier this week, or actually midweek, I did a uh, my own video on it, and um, a lot of my friends wanted to participate in it, so I gave my, my take on it, so um, I'm going to uh, let uh, my friends on here do it. I'm just waiting for um, Jake to get on. My buddy Jake, who's an Aikido uh, stylist and uh, Aikido and Jiu-Jitsu, and he has some experience and knowledge in um, using the samurai sword and uh, what have you. So I'm just going to come on, Jake. Where are you? So far, I have three people that are going to be participating and come on camera. I have uh, my friend uh, James Yates, a aka Jake. He's a Aikido guy and he did um, Jiu Jitsu. I'm waiting also for um, Tom Gallo. Tom Gallo has his own system called Tactics, which is um, derived from the Korean martial arts, which he did Hang Do and the Filipino martial arts. And he's also um, skilled in the pressure point uh, art of uh, Kyushu Jitsu. And also my friend Sandy, Sandy Lynn Mitchell, and uh, she has uh, extensive um, experience in, uh, I believe, the Chinese arts, but also in the um, Japanese arts. So I'm just going to wait for them. Oh, God. Sandy, um, can you request, uh, can you put an add on? Maybe I'll put you on first. I'm waiting for these guys. Come on. So, uh, because Sandy, your name is up, it doesn't say where I can add you. Hey, we're on, bro. We're on. Come on on. Okay, my friend Jake will be on in a couple seconds. He's just uh, logging on. He didn't know what time, I think, because he made a move to Tennessee, so there was a time difference. So I had to call him. He asked me to call him. All right, Jake. Oh, geez, Jake, can you... um? Okay, go live. Add. Okay, it says we're adding you. Mm. Hey. Okay. Hey, Jake. How are you? How you doing, Freddie? Good. Good. I'm here in Tennessee now. In Tennessee, yeah. how's the move? Ah, well, it was a long drive. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, we got we got my dad's actually doing one more. He's there was one more load, and he he he's actually go he went back. Uh, well, we got here Friday morning, and he left Friday afternoon. He left Saturday afternoon. So, so Jake, so why, don't you, um, why don't you um, introduce yourself, you know, and give a little background on what you do, and then you can give your take on um, on the topic. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, I heard you talking to somebody about not having the, uh, the ability to add them. Make sure they're on the phone, because uh, uh, it doesn't seem like 
Uh, yeah, she's, she's, she can do um, it. she's sent me the thing, so I'm going to put her on after, uh, after you. Okay, sounds good. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm James Yake, go by Jake a lot of times, uh, J. Yake became Jake, so, um, <laughs> and, uh, let's see, what's that? Go ahead, go ahead, talk. Okay, um, yeah, I, uh. I have a background in Aikido and Jiu Jitsu. Those are my primary arts that I'm ranked in. I study as much as I can. Um, I have practiced Tai Chi Chun for a long, uh, well, since uh, college. I don't have any uh, any title or or certification in Tai Chi, but uh, I've been practicing it for a long time. Young, the Young Long form. Uh, I practice it as a martial art. Um, I was taught. I, I was taught before by a friend in college, and uh, basically, it's uh, it's become part of my jiu-jitsu practice. Basically, I I interpret I interpret the moves, and that was one of our things. We we would just experiment and see what what, what do these moves work like, and how can they work? So, uh, and we you know we we read the we read the material, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the form has a lot of chinna and uh, throwing, so it works well with the jiu-jitsu and aikido. Um, so as far as uh, um, uh, improvised weapons, well, that's <laughs> that's what Aikido has three traditional weapons: uh, the the Joe, which is the short staff, which is used in a fashion of a spear; the Boken, which is like basically like a sword; and the Tanto uh, knife. So um, I I am not as comfortable, although I have had training with flexible weapons. I mean I've Back when I, st I started out karate a long, long time ago, taekwondo and karate. So uh, I've trained with some traditional kobudo, um, including the nunchaku. And I, I'm, I'm okay with nunchaku, but they're just not my first go-to weapon. I tend to prefer str uh, basically uh, clubs and blades. <laughs> those, if I, if I, so anything that can work like a club or a blade, it would be something I would pick up first. Um, Things I can use a flexible weapon, but it's not. It would not be. It would not be my first choice if I could, you know, look around and I, I would pick something up that looks like a club or a blade first. Um, so I really. I, I mean, <laughs> I used to. I, well, I used to live on a farm, so I would uh, uh, fantasize with various farm tools, you know, pitchfork, shovels, that sort of thing. So I, I like to think of uh, one of the things. Um, I, I I haven't talked. For a while, when, when I do begin teaching again, one of one of my fantasies is to have like you know how you have weapons on a wall, is to have a wall full of like hardware stuff like shovels, hammers, uh, and and things like that, and basically saying now you know make something take take your traditional knowledge and interpret it in in a new way through you know these these common tools that see traditional weapons are hard to carry around. Um, although I, I wish we could, I, I would really like. I'd really rather carry like a, a kukri than a than a gun. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, you can carry you can carry a hammer around. You can carry you can carry you could you know have to you could take a shovel around with you. No one would care. Um, they they really wouldn't know. I mean, they, I mean, they might wonder where you're going to go dig something, but they wouldn't they wouldn't consider you armed. Um, and, but you know the these things can so uh, I'm, it, where uh, I'm not sure what angle you're looking for uh, what's what's your uh, well I was like when, you... when I did my video cast what I did was um, I was talking about like um, everyday items that you know everybody would use like like um, like a cell phone right I, I gave right. example with the cell phone. Um, with um, a pen, you know, everyday items that you, you could carry around. You know, I, I see where you're going, which is really cool with the um, with the farm tools because a lot of the Okinawan systems or weapons were based on farm tools. You know, like the nunchaku exactly right. was a farm tool, and well, I guess the tonfa or you know, I'm I'm not really familiar with the Japanese and the Okinawans, but I understand that they had to use these right. tools and um, implement them. As weapons. Now, us being in the um, in the time that we are, what are we? We're in the uh, 21st century. You know, we have to use like uh, 
everyday, um, you know, items that we can carry. You know, that's why one of um, exactly. one of um, my friends here, Sandy, she's going. You know, being a woman, she's going to show you know what a woman's purse, whatever's inside a woman's purse, what she could use as a weapon. And that's why I've also um, geared this conversation not only towards the uh, martial artists, but also towards the non-martial artists. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, improvise with like, if you're caught empty-handed and you, you know, you're walking, you were, went to a place unarmed and, you know, what, uh, improvise, you can improvise weapons in the sense of, uh, you know, whatever you happen to see. I mean, picture frames on a wall, these can be used chairs. Chairs are good. I mean, especially if they're like folding chairs or whatnot, they work great as weapons. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes. Jackie Chan all the time. <laughs> so, so, you know, the, these kind of things, I, like I said, anything that would act like something like a club or a blade is, is ideal for as far for as I'm per, uh, perceived. And then, then there's, you know, just situational awareness and using your surroundings and, um, you know, as, uh, as Obi-Wan Kenobi said in, in Star Wars, I have the high ground. Um, you know, making sure you, you keep yourself aware of your surroundings and use the terrain itself like a weapon. Um, I mean, that's, that's something that you don't see in a dojo. The terrain, they, 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 you, you attempt to actually to neutralize the terrain so the terrain does not act like a weapon because the terrain is actually a very dangerous weapon. And those of us who throw people know the ground is one of our favorite weapons. Um, <laughs> the thrower doesn't do a whole lot until they hit the ground. Um, <laughs> So the uh, you know walls like like actually that's one of the things I liked about Steven Seagal's original movies was they showed like what throwing d does to people in a dojo looks a lot less effective than what it does to people in the real world because in the real world they hit walls and they hit other things that are, <laughs> that are right there um, that you don't normally see in a dojo because you don't get you know people go get go flying face first in, through a glass window uh, in a dojo often. Um, <laughs> But in, in the real world, if you were to do throw like that, you could send, you could actually do that to people, you know, throw them so that they land funny and, and hit, hit odd angles and, and whatnot and corners that stick out. These are, these are all weapons in your repertoire. If you're, if you're used to manipulating, not just your own body, but the body of uh, your opponent. Yeah. Uh, one of my good friends, Bob Martin and um, Grandmaster Bob Martin, and I don't know if you can be able to come on, I'm going to try to call him. He always says, and which makes a lot of sense, he always says, watch a Jackie Chan movie. Because Jackie Chan, how he uses his surroundings, like, you know, like a ladder or a chair. In the World War II combatives, yep. that's a big thing, was using a chair, especially against somebody who wields a knife. So, yeah, that's that's a good yep. point of, of um, bringing in, in your environment. Yeah. Yeah, so I like, that's why I wasn't sure where you were going with improvised weapons, because there are improvised weapons in that you can take things that aren't traditionally thought of as weapons, such as tools, or, you know, just things that you happen to have in your immediate environment. And that's that takes a lot of creativity. You have, and the practice is you should, if you're a practicing martial artist, and you, I bet you do, you walk into a room and you look around and you, you just, just a part of your brain is going, yeah, I could use that, I could use that, I could use that. I'm not sure I could use that. Um, <laughs> that's just going on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add? Uh, that's, that's it, my friend. I mean, I, I, uh, I wish I had more, but, I mean, that's just uh, improvised. Improvised weaponry is really more about being creative and taking what you know and, you know, like like I said, I, I, my, tra my weapons training, tr my traditional weapons training, so is in – Using things that are like clubs, staffs, and and bladed objects. So anything I look around, that's that's what I'm going to tend to use them like uh, something like that. So and and that, but that works for me because that's what that's what I've done. Um, someone who uses who trains more flexible weapons, um, you know, using things like uh, like um, elect, like your electronics. You have tons of wires and cords around, right? Well, if you're trained in flexible weapon, these, these would make excellent weapons for you. Um, that sort of thing. You just look around and keep that in mind. And then if you're, if you're, um, well, for instance, in my car, in the back of my car, I have, I have my training weapons, you know, my, in a bag for, for training, but I also keep like a small shovel. Now I keep it there for, you know, all kinds.
kinds of things, especially in the winter. If you need to dig something out, it's great to have a shovel. But you know what? It's also there for if I have, you know, because I, I like my shovel better than <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, d- dispense with and bury the body because that's it's it's not it's not a full size shovel. It's a small shovel, but I can use that. I mean, that's that that becomes a very dangerous weapon in my hands, um, and it acts something like a club and a blade. So. <laughs> So I, I, you know, the, these things, I, I have them there, so I know where they are. And um, one of my self-defense instructors uh, uh, talked about keeping like sharpened pencils uh, in your visor. You know, the, the where the you know the strap for your visor, where the elastic in there. Keep those there, just in case someone reaches into your car while you're. So you have something sharp to stick in their hand. You know, <laughs> something like that. I keep pens, and then you can do the same with pens. All right. Say again. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. I, I'm going to um, bring on my friend Tom. Tom, you there? All right. I look right. forward to see, uh, seeing you. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll come over. I'll go. I, keep, I keep these up. So, yeah, thank you for your um, input, uh, Jake. It's always, uh, dude, um, uh, I might have to take a trip down to Tennessee. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I'll, I'll be back in New Jersey eventually because I have friends there, including you. So Yeah, you got to come up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how, how do I log off, or you, you log me off. All right, let's, um, oh, somebody's calling me. Who's calling me? Okay. All right, who wants to come on next? Tom. Hold on, man. Okay, I'm trying to get Tom on. Hold on one second, man. All right, Tom. Tom Gallo, my good friend and my uh, one third of the Mouseketeers. <laughs> so, Tom, yeah, about, yeah, just a quick um, introduction: of who you are, your where your school is. Plug your school. Go to his school if you want to learn pressure points. Kyushu, he's the man. I'm the man. Uh, yeah. School man. is in uh, Long Island, Elmont, Long um, Island. Um, tomorrow. What? Can you hear me? Nine o'clock. I'm going to go a little early. I'll get us going. Ah, he's on the phone. Hi, my name is Tom Gallo. Got a school, Tactics Martial Arts, okay. Elmont, Long Island. Yeah. Teach Filipino martial arts, uh, Korean martial arts, Kyushu. We have uh, okay. kickboxing okay. and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and okay. C-Lot. Uh, a whole bunch of things. Okay, cool. And Ferdy drowned. Where are you, Ferdy? I'll test okay. He's ignoring us. Okay, okay, bye. Okay. So we're talking about Where's sorry, my nephew is Paul. <laughs> so we're doing um you know every A items for um improvised weapons. Right. So you want your take? I know you do the credit card as I do, phone, you know, whatever. Yeah, that that credit card was uh awesome the first time we did a, a improvised weapons seminar and you used me as a to demo on and just decided to actually try to slit my throat with a credit card. Mm-hmm. Scared the hell out of me. Yeah, so just just, just give us your take on it. <laughs> on what? Just improvise in general? Uh, yeah, yeah. On what what well, you any, recommend anyway. and all that. And huh? anything you know, any anything you put in your hand. Anything, anything like your cell phone, your credit card. You know how you use it, how you apply it. You know. Hey, I, I I always tell uh, like people that come to my school and they are like, oh, I can't carry a stick around because we do the Filipino. Uh, stick fighting. I was like, yeah, you don't need a stick. You have an umbrella, you have a cane, you have a magazine, roll it up, newspaper. You don't have to kill the guy with it. You just beat him senseless. You know, uh, anything you put in your hand, you just, as long as you understand yeah. the dynamics of how things work and movements and footwork and where to, where to hit, anything is a weapon. It doesn't have to be something deadly. Garbage can cover. Whatever. Shoe, sneaker. What the, what the, what do you besides your knife? What do you carry around? You got a coupon, right? You got a coupon? Yes. Yes. I don't carry knives. <laughs> that's that's no no, that's a no no. Um I have a coupon. I have um actually I have a in my bag I have a, a set of claves which are musical what are those? instruments are about they're about they're musical instruments, percussive percussion instruments. They're about nine inches. Uh, you have one available? Have one. 
I don't have one here in my immediate possession. No. I have a tomahawk, <laughs> a couple of knives, but no, no, uh, let me go get one. Bear with He's going to go get one, people. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you know, Rob wants you to take your shirt off. What do you want me to do? Rob. <laughs> Big Rob. Rob. Canadian Rob. 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 Yeah, he says, Amazing. Take... Yeah, Sandy says hello. <laughs> Some doof has put WWE. I don't know who that is. That was me. Because you're talking about chairs. You're using chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did come up. It did come up. That's good, uh, you know. <laughs> I also got, oh, is that Mark or is that Kim? Mark Colvin, Kim Colvin, one chair. All right, so these are, these are the claves. Holy shit, what is that for? It's... Oh, musical so instrument. those are like kind of like clubs or little little sticks, little palm sticks. In uh, okay. Wanango, we use uh, we call them dongbangs, and we strike uh, pressure points, do joint locks with them. So I carry them around, and they're e easy access. And if I ever get stopped, it's like, oh, I'm in a band, so I start tapping them. <laughs> now, Any, now how would you apply that? I mean, could you could use like this? <laughs> could you sit a wally those? I could sit a wally them. Yep, I could use them uh, the puño on them. I could use it this way. I could use it for uh, hooking, joint locks, pressure point strikes, and, you know, whatever your imagination holds, whatever you train in. If you do forms, traditional forms, you put one of these in your hand and just do the motions with them. But they're, they're, they're awesome. Right, I got and they're... What? Go ahead. I should have asked this also with Jake. Uh, for the people that are going to watch these that are non-martial artists or have um, mm -hmm. have done martial arts but don't actually like train in the weapons aspect of it uh, what um, what item would you um, recommend like I always recommend like um, a pen and um, a cell phone you know to have those carried around and your keys right right keys are I, always, I always always use uh my keys. I don't. I don't put them between my my fingers like everyone tells you to do. I you don't do carry. Wolverine. I don't. What? Well, I don't do Wolverine. I don't have a key here. Do I have a key? No, but I'll pretend I have a key. So pretend it's not a knife. So what I do is I hold the key this way, so you really can't see it, and yet it has support when I slash. So when I slash the key. So you're, you're... My fingers You're holding using the end it of as it. a uh, knife, makeshift knife. Pretty much, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't like holding it between my my knuckles like that. I'd rather. Yeah, you're, but it's you're, so cool, you, Wolverine. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> when you, but when you, it's when like, you're you know, juggling. X Men. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an X Man. X Block. X Block. <laughs> Tom's favorite, favorite technique. Block. My favorite technique: the X Block. We bring you up in class all, all right. the time about that. Right, anything yeah, else when you, you want to add? I can... when, when, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I was, I was gonna say, that's right. I was going to say when I – the reason I have the key like that is when your adrenaline kicks in, you got uh, – you know, your refined skills go out the window and your gross motor movement, gross motor movements come into play. And it's just like big flailing, uh, pushing. So when you have the key in your hand like that or any weapon, when you start – Slashing or flailing in that in that um, motion, you know your key is right. You have like your preferred target cutting. Um, whatever's available. Well, my targets are pressure point targets, ner nerve targets, uh, veins, arteries. Well, yeah, like you know that. pressure points. But what about somebody on the you know uh, that has no martial arts experience? What would you recommend? Um, well, the eyes are awesome, but. You can't always get to them because of our natural reflex to protect them. Uh, throat, um, above the eyes, if you could slash right above the eyes and make a nice cut, get a nice um, blood curtain into the eyes, the blood will go right into that. Uh, ears, jab, the, jab anything into the ear, which is great. But the neck, the neck is usually the easiest. You could 
push someone into the chest and slide right up into their throat. If they grab so you, that's the pain in the neck. Kid, kidney. <laughs> that's pain in the neck. So everyone right. tells me I'm a pain in the and, neck. Anything else you want to add? Um, good. I don't know. Should I plug something? Go ahead, plug, plug something. My, uh, all right, I'll plug. In June, first weekend in June, we're having a big uh, Q show uh, summit with Evan Pantazzi coming up, coming down from Massachusetts, I should say. Uh, it's not your normal pressure point seminar. It's, uh, it's an anatomical workshop, basically, understanding how the body works and how to shut it down. Uh, any, any, it's, it's in all the old, it's in every martial arts, and it got lost in translation over the years. Yeah. I'm probably going to um, do a uh, video on that as it comes close to plug it. Maybe you should too. Yeah, oh, definitely will. I see Rob, Rob said he's going to be there, but I'm not taking my shirt off for yeah, you. Yeah, he also wants you to take your <laughs> shirt off. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, bro. I'm going to bring Sandy. Are you still there? Hey, Sandy. Yeah, Sandy's there. She said hi. Good to see you. I'm going to see if I can bring her on. Sandy, Sandy. Oh. Goodbye. Come guys. on. I'm gonna, well, that's, I'm gonna call her. Stay there. Stay. Okay. Um, all right. Go. You can go. You can go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call okay. Sandy now. I don't know if uh, she can hear me. Have fun. Hey, you ready to come on? Yeah. All right. Uh, um, right. add yourself on, and I'll I'll um, approve it. Okay. Right. Okay. So Sandy's gonna come on. I don't know. It's just hey, Rob. If you want to come on too, you can come on after Sandy. All right, hold on. I'm approving Sandy. Okay, so we're adding her. Hey, Sandy. Hello. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you, honey? <laughs> I'm good. Where in Massachusetts is Tom going to be? I cut off before. No, he ain't going to be in Massachusetts. It's going to be in New York. I thought you said he was being in Massachusetts. Sorry. Right. Come on. Come on down. Make it a weekend. Hang out with us. <laughs> I'll try. I'll yeah. try. Hi. How are you? Oh, hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, your um, friends are I, on. No, here. my name's Sandy. Yeah. Yeah, there's Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Okay. Right. Oh, God. Hi, I'm Sandy. <laughs> I'm Sandy, and like Ferdy said, I have um, a background in both Chinese and Japanese art. Um, I originally trained in Koshu Kempo when I was a child and then as a young adult, and I furthered my education in a form of um, Japanese warrior art um, that was a type of Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, and for reasons Ferdy knows, I'm not very, um, not going to state that name or who I trained with. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. No. Um. So, no, not worth it. No. Um. Ferdy, uh, you asked me to to um bring out the weapons that I have in my purse that I carry around every day, and you guys have pretty much brought up everything. <laughs> so. Nah, bring it, up what I'm you gonna, got. You know. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. I wish I could like turn. Yeah, the I like that. On. Explain. Okay, hold on. Maybe I can switch the camera. Did I hear it? Give finger. Yep, I can switch. Look at that. I switched, I switched the camera on. See, there's my purse, everybody. With you. All right, so you're going to be able to see. It's a Michael Claus purse. Isn't that really cool? I like it. It's really pretty. It's a tote, actually. It's a tote bag. And I like how it's open so everything's easily accessible. So, of course, the first thing everybody brings up is keys. Okay? And Tom was absolutely right. You don't want to... Hold on, I'm trying to do this. One Why does nobody you want, don't want to carry him? Nobody wants to do Wolverine. You know why? Tom's absolutely right because if you hit something with the key like this, the key's going to slip back into your hand. So it's not going to do the stabbing technique that most people think it will do. I mean, it can cause some damage, but it can also just end up getting pushed back into between your fingers and then, of course, not stab. Okay. So definitely, so, with, so you don't do Wolverine with it. No, definitely what um Tom was saying, you know, with the finger supporting it. Hi, okay, Anne, how this are is you? great. <laughs> I'm just you saying, could, um, my friend Anne. That. She's a badass. Oh, hi, Anne. Yeah, I hi. gave her. I gave her. I think two or three knives. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, you know. I don't. Me. I don't carry my my knives around. She's the one that came. She's the one that came with me uh, to do the hatchet throwing. Oh, oh! I saw the videos of that in the pictures. Oh, she's a fucking Hi, badass. Hi, Ian. She's a badass. <laughs> Yeah. So no, like Tom said, definitely support it with the finger. I mean, I would, uh, you, I'm showing it so that you could see more of it, but definitely be more covered so most people wouldn't see that. Um, great for stabbing the eyes if you can get to them. Um, like Tom was saying, if you can get to the ears, you know what else? And Tom does pressure points, and I also have learned pressure points, so this is also good right behind the ear. Or if you're face to face with your um, attacker, which sometimes, especially ladies, they are. Right um, on the bridge of their, right under their nose, okay? Push that in and down, that's a, a shocking pain. And it, it generally make them jump, and it could be enough just to get you away from them. So definitely the keys. Now, if you're looking for more of a, um, a stabbing weapon, where is it? Oh, it's, uh, most women have these. Tweezers. Oh, jeez. These things are... Tweezers, yeah, right? okay. Okay. Not only, not only that side, because this is definitely going to dig in and stab. Definitely. So that can do some damage. So you don't even don't, have to look for the soft those. points. With you. <laughs> uh, I do. Sometimes I got to pluck the eyebrows. Okay. So, you know, you have this part and here too that can also be used just like the keys can. Okay. It's, 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 it's definitely got some movement to it. But these are definitely sharp like a knife blade. So this is going to be able to stab in deeper, less soft tissue. You can actually get this dug in. Okay? All right. Now, more for pressure points. Where is it? A pen. You know? What is that? Pen? Just a pen. A pen. Yep. Just a typical pen. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, definitely good for pressure points. It's also good for, it works like a tonbow. You could do um, joint locks with it. Oh, my foot. <laughs> joint manipulations, joint locks. Do you have a coupon? Okay. No, I don't. Okay, okay, go ahead. So, oh, yeah. Okay, and finally, you guys hit on it, right? And not every woman does, but I do because I have a tote bag. I carry my umbrella with me. Okay? Now, actually, this isn't finally. I have one more weapon right, what to is, show oh, you, too. Umbrella? That's my umbrella. Yep, now this, again, can work like a tombow. It's the length of a short staff. All right. Can you, um, um, joint what, locks. Sandy, Sandy, I'm sorry. Can you explain what a tombow is? Because we, we have um, a couple of people here that are non-martial artists. Okay. A tombow is a short staff. It's a staff that's um, about 18 inches long or shorter. Okay. Um, you can use it for um, definitely like a wrist lock or any, any lock, joint lock manipulation. You can add it so that it adds pressure to it. So a lot of um, items that you have in your home can be used for this. Um, are a remote control, um, even a CD case. It can be added around the neck. This is great for if you're doing a choke out um, to put it on the point where the blood, the blood choke is to add that extra um, strength because it's also um, inflexible. It's, um, it's, it's one line. So it's not like your, your arm, which can slip. This is going to hold right there. Oh, okay, so you mentioned blood chokes. Uh, why don't you explain yes. that? And my friend Ann, who's on here, she's a nurse. So if you want to get a little technical and medical, she'd understand what you're talking about. Okay. And um, an airway choke is where you're, um, you're choking on the larynx, where you're stopping the, the breathing stopping the air. from going. Stopping the air. Thank you. Yeah, the air. Um, it can take about two to three minutes to choke somebody out. You know, think of how long you can hold your breath. Let me switch the camera around so people can see me. <laughs> hold on. There I am. All right, so think about how long it's, you can hold your breath underwater. If you're choking somebody out by the ear right here, you, it could take you two to three minutes to actually choke them out. And that's two to three minutes of somebody fighting against you to, to not be choked out. So and a blood choke is right here where your arteries are, okay? And you put the pressure on that point, and they can go out within two to three seconds. You know, um, some maximum I've seen is about six seconds, and I've seen it done. I've also had it done on me, but now it's really quickly. I was me. very shocked. It, yeah, if properly um, done, it could be done. It's like seconds. It's, it's seconds. What happens is um, the blood obviously stops going to your brain. Your brain needs blood and oxygen. And um, what happens is, is it's almost like immediate. You go into this, like, like shutdown mode. 
everything your body doesn't need anymore, it shuts down. So you stop hearing, you stop seeing, you know, you stop feeling. And all of a sudden it just shuts down because it's trying to conserve as much oxygen as it can in your brain to keep it, to keep it going. Now with a blood choke, um, person can go out in about two to three seconds and you could literally kill them if you held on for over 60 seconds because you're stopping oxygen from going to the brain, obviously, you know. So like, uh, like we said, an airway choke takes two to three minutes to take the person out. And if once you let go, you, they can still be revived because they, they're, there was still blood flowing to their brain. So they haven't lost oxygen. But with okay, blood so, choke, they go out in about two to three seconds. So how would, how would you and they apply could the actually umbrella um, The umbrella, well, with any choke, you want to use your forearm and you want to do it where you're getting the bone into that part there. But sometimes people can slip and they'll use the front part of their forearm, which is fly, like pliable, so they're not getting as much pressure, okay? With the umbrella, it, it, it doesn't bend. So once you're holding it to it and pushing in, it can, it, it's, even if it's slipped or twisted, it's still a hard thing that's not flexible. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... I wish I didn't have to hold the camera. I would show you on my son. I want to go to Tom's. No, and, um, I... We um, go to Tom's and do like a, a more, you know, live, even a live or if not a live, but a video on, on this. Yeah. And, and if you're still yeah. there, don't worry. I'll teach you all this shit. Make you even okay. more badass so, than you were before. <laughs> and of course, the umbrella. She can yeah, I, we'll make it there. Um, Sandy. So, <laughs> yes. Um, one of the nines that I gave Ann, like one of their vans uh -huh. at the hospital, like the key, somebody locked the keys, so she used it to pick the lock. <laughs> <laughs> I tell right, you, so my friends are badass. badass. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right. Well, the other thing about the umbrella is you also have this. This edge here can be used for pressure points. And finally, the best part about the umbrella is it goes from a tonbo. Ah, it did it. It didn't open up. <laughs> goes from a tonbo to a hanbo once it opens immediately if it's not broken like mine is Stay away, but it can Stay go away. to a, <laughs> it can go through to a longer um a longer a bow uh oh you there sandy you there <laughs> I'm here. Right, can you see me? Okay, I see you now. You kind of like froze okay, in sorry. time. Sorry about that. That's no, right. but you, your umbrella when when and when lengthening can become a longer um staff, so it can go into a hanbo or a, um or a kobo. Okay, mm -hmm. and then of course, um, I think it was James who um said it. Wires. You know? Andy, Wires. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yes. See, now, I'm not going to carry my knife around, though, because, like, I need to go into um, professional buildings, and if I have to I have to go through metal detectors, I don't want to have to deal with that. I have to deal with the um, t the tweezers sometimes. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. But, um, no, so, yes, definitely wires can be used. You know, I have headphones that I use all the time uh, to listen to music and stuff, but this could be used to help choke. It can also be used for a hojo jitsu, um, tying somebody up, you know. Sounds stupid, but if you can get them in a position where you can um, tie up their hands so that they can't attack you anymore, these. I don't know. That's, that sounds kind of kinky. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're attacking me. Not if you're attacking me. But no. Um, seriously, anything, even um, powder. I don't carry around powder compacts, but powder compacts, you know. Are you uh, getting ninja on in their face. Yeah. Well, oh, well, you know what? Not for nothing. The whole um, art of ninja was to be able to survive against um, samurai who were going rebel. So they needed to be able to survive against them. So they had to come up with ideas that the samurai couldn't fight against. Ninja were not considered honorable. The samurai fought honorably. So they had to do other things to save themselves. So yeah, by all means, a powder compact, go for it. You know, okay. eyeshadow, okay. anything, you know? Yeah, definitely. Break it up. Get it in their eyes. They're not going to be able to see. You know? Yeah, definitely. You, this is your life. This is life and death. Like, um, it was Bruce it. Lee. I know this is, gonna, this is going to sound tacky. This is going to sound tacky. Bruce Lee's only, his fighting style only looked good in the movies. 
when he fought for real, he didn't care about looking good. All he cared about was surviving. Yeah. So I don't care if I, I look good. As long as I get out of there and I'm able to go home to my family, I'm okay with it. See, me, it doesn't matter what I do. I always look good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> No <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> but I'm serious. Seriously, Ferdy, when you said that, I didn't add anything to my purse. I was like, all right, I'll just take my. Oh, I well, believe there's you. A weapon, I, that's, there's a that's why I think <laughs> you know? it was perfect. Was because you know, uh, I, mean, I know that you know the first, you know Jake and um, Tom, you know, and even myself, you know, I don't wear a cherry. I don't know what the fuck's in a purse. You know? <laughs> So you, you was perfect. You were the perfect one because you know, oh, you beat the, uh, from a woman's point of view. Hmm. You know? And my <laughs> friend Ann, she's oh. my girl Ann here. She's trying to keep awake. I don't know if she's still awake. <laughs> Wake up, Ann. That's Hatchet Girl. You know. Hey, Ann, um, Hi. Andy, have you ever seen the video yeah. that I um that I usually sometimes I post on um, it was from the movie Raid Two, the girl with the two hammers. I don't think I have. Oh, okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send that to you, Hammer Girl. <laughs> Fucking badass. Hammer Girl. Fucking badass. Well, like, like, like Tom said, I don't carry around hammers either. So. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And once again, sometimes you got to go in those professional buildings into the metal detectors. I don't think that would pass. Yeah, but. But you know, I do want to see how you use how you use a credit card to slit someone's throat. Oh, uh, this one is on um, like really. This is my um, old uh, AAA card, and if you hold it mm -hmm. like this and kind of like curve it, and just try it, and you do it hard, boom. I did it with Tom, like, he mm -hmm. I think he attacked me with a knife, and I kind of like, you know, got on there, and then got him behind, and I did this, and, and I didn't know it was going to hurt that much, and he goes, oh, that hurts. And I said, oh, really? And he says, oh, try it on me, and I'm like, Fuck that hurt. <laughs> and it's it, 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 um, like, you know, it left a mark. Now, you know, mm -hmm. if you kind of like sharpen it up, yeah, you can cut somebody. My new, um, oh, let me uh, check this out. My my new cards, my my new business cards. Yep. That I got from, from uh, Vistaprint. And I got them extra thick. See? They're extra thick extra thick, right? I think I gave you mm -hmm. one. And you could use that. And I mean, you're not going to like okay. it, but boom. You can, and, you know, you know, the eyes. Sometimes the paper cut hurts yeah, worse than the actual digging deep. They, they, they yeah. hurt. Yeah. I hold them like that, like yep. this. You know, this. Like, I always say that one of the, you know, if you know how to do the hammer, what do you call the hammer fist? You had a, you got a Japanese name for the hammer fist? I, you know what? I, I, I know. just I don't, don't really remember. Peanut, All I know is you don't do it to the top of the head. It's meant for the nose. No, but yeah. I mean, this, this motion, you know, you have it with a knife, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, uh, yep, knife. the same, you do the mm. same motion, yep. And everything even, is like, everything, you learn the same motion. magazine. I know Tom addressed the World of Magazine. I think I addressed it in one of my mm -hmm. earlier um, videos, right? Mm-hmm. I don't do this. Yeah. I saw one of the ninjas. I'm not going to mention the name. That's what they were doing in one of those videos. So, you know, I said, okay. So I think my favorite, my, my favorite improvised weapon that I was ever, and I actually was using it, well, two favorite improvised weapons. One, a flexible um, weapon. We were told to, um, go get the shirt that we wore to class onto the mat, and I actually bowed a sweater onto the mat and used it as a flexible weapon. Yeah. <laughs> so I could throw people with a sweater. That was awesome. But one of the other ones was um, a cup, just like a plastic cup, and using the lip right here underneath the nose and then pushing down, that pressure point was so painful. Oh, yeah, I know. Feeling it on me, I, I was like, I was just dry. And this, was, was, this oh, yeah. was just like, with a, yeah, with a kid's plastic cup, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Improvised mm -hmm. weapons are everywhere. Everywhere. A beer mug. Cheers. <laughs> oh, beer mug. Cheers. Come by. 
Yeah, come by. Banzai. Mm-hmm. Oh, salud. Let's do the Italian thing. Salud. Because we got a lot of Rhode Islanders on here. That's my that's yeah. my toast, Nastarovia. Nastarovia. My my Russian girlfriend, my Russian ex girlfriend. Mm. Nastarovia. Yeah. Nastarovia. Cool, cool. Anything All else right, you want to add? Fun. You're the only um, only you guys three. I thought you know I get some other people, but I guess it's kind of like running late. But you know, either that or they don't know. Mm. They don't know. Oh anymore. yeah, I gotta put my. Yeah. I gotta put my kid to bed too. <laughs> All right, night, Ferdy. All right, good night. All right, stay yeah. on and I'll close off. Okay. All right, good night. So, um, uh, I guess that's, I don't see anybody else. Um, but the, the three people that I did have scheduled, um, I thank them very much. It was awesome that they, they came on. Um, yeah, so uh, I think, uh, I should do a video that over at Tom's school where we can show the application of it. But the, you know, um, these these um, items, this actual uh, started my idea of um, coming up with this. And actually, I have taught classes on uh, using everyday um, items as an improvised weapon. But it was really cool. It was on um, Facebook. There's this uh, page called The Art of Manliness. And it said, you know, 12... I didn't even read the article. I probably skimmed through it, but it said twelve um, items that you can use as a you know as a weapon. And I'm saying to myself, only twelve, <laughs> only twelve. But you saw from like you know three perspectives over there. You know, uh, Jake living in um, in Tennessee and um, showing like you know where weapons are from. You know, using the tools as weapons and. A lot of the um, ancient styles, of, like Okinawa, they um, used farm tools as weapons, like the nunchaku and I guess the tonfa. Um, I'm sorry, forgive me if I'm saying the um, names wrong. Okay. And then Tom, living in an urban area, you know, he brought out the keys. He brought up, um, I think, I think it's the cell phone. Anything anything that um, would be more um, conducive to a close quarter um, close quarter situation. Because again, Tom was addressing the urban area. And then you had Sandy and uh, which is cool with Sandy was that uh, being a woman and carrying a purse, a woman's purse has a lot of items and, and she showed items that she could use you know, to defend herself, of course, the key, again, where's the key, you know, uh, she had the umbrella, which was really cool, she had the tweezers, you know, and who would have thought of tweezers, I wouldn't know, I don't carry them, and the really, uh, the really interesting one was powder, I guess you could, the women had the compact and you had powder, and so those were, you know, three perspectives, which, you know, three different perspectives, and it was from three different kind of like, you know, environments in three different situations. So, uh, you know, I thank, uh, thank my friends for coming on. Hello all, it's Ferdy. Um, yeah, this is my second video today because uh, tomorrow the weather's going to be so good, so nice that uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to have time to put a video up. Anyways, um, there's a topic that I wanted to talk about. And, um, Usually, uh, when I talk about this topic, it, it's very good for um, people who don't do, basically, that don't do martial arts, and especially for women. And it's basically turning, uh, you know, taking everyday objects and uh, turning them into an improvised weapon. Okay. Of course, when we're doing the, um, the Filipino style martial arts. Oh, we're able to translate a lot of the movements from from the weapons to empty hands. So basically, um, you know, everybody watches when we do these movements, but they don't um, understand that footwork plays a, a important um, part of uh, of our art. Okay, footwork. Our triangle footwork, we're angling out, going to the outside of the attack, 
All right. Um, positioning our weapons to the target. Um, maintaining um, the, the advantage by um, placing ourselves behind our attacker. You know, all, all sorts of stuff, you know, come to play. Okay. So that's why the beauty of our art is that it, we can um, translate it from weapon to empty hand and vice versa. Oh shit, I should have brought a knife. Damn. What kind of Filipino martial arts am I without a knife? I had the uh, Okay. Oh. I got my cutting bit. Okay, so this, of course we all know that these slashing motions these slashing motions can be translated into chops, hammer fist, hammer fist. It's one of, one of my favorite um, my my favorite uh, positions is the hammer fist. Okay, now when we're using the pakal, the pakal um, hand grip or the ice pick grip. Hey, Rich. Okay, so. Using the principles of the Filipino style, we can translate that into, of course, our blade, our stick, and our empty hand. So we can take it a step further and and translate it into taking an everyday object and turning it into a weapon. Okay. Um, this post, I always keep. I always keep them up. I always keep them up. Ay, kumusta na po, kumusta na po, uh, Mataguro. Uh, you know, these videos, I always keep them up, and, um, you know, for, um, for future reference. But also, I'm going to use this as the topic for Sunday when I invite, um, martial artists on here to give their take on improvised weapons. You know, taking the, um, everyday item and turning it into a, a weapon. So that's kind of like what I wanted to do so um i'm gonna ask um you know whoever w would like to share to please share and that'll be sunday so sunday night uh when i uh do um this video and broadcast it uh i'm kind of gonna try to act as the moderator so um i'm gonna um i'll invite uh i'm gonna invite all my martial art friends i'm gonna put a post up that you know Anybody who's interested in um, getting an introduction onto uh, using um, an everyday object to uh, protect or defend themselves. So, when we, of course, of course, um, let me back it up again. So, like I said, we're using the principles of the of the Filipino martial arts. The principles, the footwork. Okay. The body movement. The I like to use the hubud, the hubud, okay, to translate that. Okay, so all we have to do now is to take our take the object that we're using and just substitute it. Okay, so I'm going to use on this part the cell phone. All right, so this cell phone I could use this the cell phone to uh, defend myself. Now, when we talk about um, taking an object and um, using it as a uh, weapon, we have to take consideration of two factors. One is the um, characteristic of the object, and number two is the target that you um, plan on, uh, you know, aiming at. Okay, so. When we take the characteristic of the object, okay, so in this case, this cell phone is uh, an impact weapon, okay? So we're gonna use this as an impact weapon. And usually when you use the impact weapon, and we can use, you know, I like to uh, utilize the corner of the phone, okay? So when we're doing that, okay, and taking that and using our strikes, I, and, and again, I like to do the hammer fist. To me, I always say that the hammer fist is the most, one of the most versatile um, weapons to use. Okay, so you master the hammer fist and um, just uh, put something in your hand and just like hammer, boom, 
and you're good to go, All right? So, so with this being an impact weapon, um, one of my targets would be, you know, the bony part, because I'll, um, in most instances, the nerves run against, uh, you know, um, not against, but kind of like near the bones. So you can, boom, hit the bones, and most likely you get a nerve. Okay. Also, you know, um, the eyes. Eyes. I always say that the eyes are one of the um, top uh, targets. Um, uh, to um, go after, especially women. I mean, you know, um, women with your nails always go after the eyes, the eyes, the eyes, the eyes. So, with my again with my cell phone impact weapon. All right. Now, keys. Here are the keys. Now everybody, everybody subscribes to the. Wolverine. Let's put them between your your hands, your fingers. Me, I don't. I don't subscribe to that, you know, because your your hands can be, you know. I mean, look at that. Look at look at mine. I mean, you know, I this is a Kubaton, by the way. That's my weapon, weapon of choice. So I mean, it's kind of it, it gets like clumsy, especially of all these keys, all right? To um, put it between your fingers. So what I like to do is take one of the keys, hold it like this, and now that is my makeshift knife. Okay. Again, target the eyes. Mm -hmm. So I always say to everybody, take your key, all right, target the eye. You know, imagine the eye is the uh, keyhole. <coughs> Insert and turn. And that's what it is insert and turn. Also, you could use this to, you know, pro possibly lacerate, you know, I, I'm depending on how hard, how, you know, how hard you slash at them would depend on also, and the speed would also depend on, um, on the, um, seriousness of, seriousness of the wound, okay? So, the key, you know, it, um, it has the point, like a knife, so that's your puncture, your puncture. Okay, so I always that's I always tell everybody, don't do Wolverine, do the knife. Okay, now with mine, which is really cool, is that I, my keys I have a Kubaton. So what I do is I like to hold the Kubaton, and I, I like to hold the Kubaton, and then I have um, a key. All right, so that way I could um, penetrate puncture, and I can um, hit. With an impact, because the Kubaton is an impact weapon. But what's good with these impact weapons, especially if they have a point, is you can always get the eyes. Eyes, you know, uh, main target eyes. You know, you can feign a kick to the groin. The guy's gonna put his hands down there to protect the groin. Oop, eyes are all open. You know, kick, boom. All right. So there. Yeah. Now, another thing that I like to use the cards okay this is my old um triple a card okay so if you hold the card in this manner like the way i was holding the um the uh cell phone okay you can have this and just like curl it just a little there you can lacerate you're not gonna cut but you will you you will um inflict pain matter of fact um it was uh Tom, Tom Gallo, Tom and I, when um, we both taught a, uh, we both taught a, um, an improvised weapon um, seminar, and we used this the card, and um, Tom attacked me and, uh, like, you know, took it against his throat, and he goes, oh, that really hurt, and I go, did it hurt that much? And he goes, yeah. So I said, do it to me, and I'm like, boom, and it, it left a mark, and yeah, it hurt, it hurt. Okay, so you could, you know, and if, um, you know, have an extra card, this is an old expired card from 2012, you know, you can even sharpen it. Oh, dude, I should have brought my calling, my, um, I have, a uh, my, uh, my business cards for, um, my Falcon business cards, 
that I've got from, oh, what was that, Vistaprint? They're really thick. They're really thick, and it has a corner there. So I can use that for the eye. I could use that for this, you know. Yeah. So we have uh, the card, which we could use to lacerate, slice, slice, get the eyes. I have my cell phone, which is an impact, holding it like this, okay, I can get the eyes any part of the bone, no, bony part, my keys, alright, the keys, your little knife, hold it like this, you can even scratch, alright, always go for the face, scratch and the eyes, eyes, Eyes turn, eyes turn. See, in in, um, in Kali, we we have one move. Um, case my knife, where it's a it's a, a thrust. It's a thrust, and then a slice or a slash. Thrust, slash, thrust, slash, thrust, slash. So, why not use that with your key, right? I take my key into the eye, slash, slash, one eye, boom, one eye, boom, okay. Um, what's, with these everyday, you know, items, especially um, women, you know, women, you have your pocketbooks, you have your purses, and, um, you know, you, you have a lot of shit in there, you know? You know, you, you could probably use um, your lipstick, <laughs> your lipstick. Get the guy in the freaking eye, you know. So, uh, you know what I'd like is if anybody's interested, especially the women here, if uh, you know, um, inbox me and uh, give me a list of uh, items you have in your purse, and uh, on our next telecast, I can, you know, tell you how uh, how you could use that as a weapon. Of course, nothing, you know, uh, I could tell you how to use it, but it's not a substitute for proper training and. Uh, I said always train in the, you know, I mean, I don't know about in all the other, you know, the other arts, okay, I'm not, I, I can't, can't say anything about the other arts, but the Filipino arts, you know, Filipino arts, everything is there, it is there, all right, and uh, it's it's just such a deep art, um, what I love about um, the Filipino arts is it's simplicity, but it's very deep. So, uh, also, um, geez, uh, I didn't have, I wish I had some kind of cloth, because you have, like, the flexible, you know, but, uh, I, obviously, I really didn't come prepared for this. <laughs> it was kind of like a last-minute, um, uh, broadcast, but, um, yeah, so, uh, always remember the, um, the characteristic of the item. Of the everyday item like my key I can puncture and scratch okay with uh, the edge right with my phone it's uh, it's an impact weapon treated as an impact weapon all right I always say the hammer fist hammer fist is one of my favorites hammer because mm -hmm. of course I'm gonna hold the knife like this too so it's very the hammer fist is hammer fist is very versatile it's your targets. I mean, it's, you know, the face, the phone, boom, mm, right there, right, the nose, the eyes, right, and uh, my old uh, card could be a credit card. You know, I have a, um, I have my um, Falcon business card, which is thick and uh, has like sharp edges. You can get that on um, Vistaprint, which is really cool. So, yeah. oh, another thing I forgot. This, you know, the pen. This, this is a highlighter, but you can use it especially if you, you know, if it was a real pen, take it out and you, you have that point. In your eyes, 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 and you can like, you know, because of the point. If if you um anybody ever saw the uh, Jason Bourne movies, Jason Bourne actually used a pen. 
and um, he stabbed the guy here, and then he used the roll of newspaper, you know, and it's kind of like an impact weapon too. Uh, I really didn't like the way he, um, they did it, uh, you know, but I guess you have to have a lot of newspaper. Let me see. Oh, got this Verizon thing. You have to have like a lot of newspaper because Nah, not gonna really hurt, but if I took this like that, right? Yeah, All right. I'm using the edge here, hammer fist again, hammer fist again, uppercut, right. boom, 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 boom. I right. roll up newspaper. I've seen, you know. Uh, people do it. Uh, you're gonna have to have a lot of pages in that rolled up newspaper. Where in this, it's um, you know, this, this. You know, at least if I rolled this up, you know, I have this edge. I have this. Right? That's what my weapon is. Okay. All right. So um, that's kind of my little introduction into uh, the. Uh, everyday items and um, turning them into an improvised weapon that hopefully you can use to protect and defend yourself. Of course, there, I was just only introducing this. It's not a substitute for real quality training. Of course, the Filipino style. I don't, I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't know how to, uh, how to um, apply it with um, other styles. But I only do what I do. So. Anyways, thank you again, everyone. Um, you know, if you have any questions, you know, any comments, uh, feel free to uh, um, to uh, either um, leave a comment here or you know send it to um, my um, inbox. And uh, yeah, Sunday I'm going to ask uh, um, other martial artists, and hopefully uh, they will accommodate us and uh, see what their take is on turning everyday items into an improvised weapon. Right on, so uh, good night and um, sweet dreams.